have to join. Hello, welcome patient viewers. Um, we had some technical difficulties there. Uh, Happy New Year to those of you who have not said this to yet. And uh, welcome to Simon No Channel Show. And to those listening af after the fact, welcome to uh, the Lone Star Under the Rising Sun podcast. There, I got my, my, my two cents win. And I'd like to welcome my guest, and he will shortly welcome me because I'm appearing on his podcast. Uh, this is Shay Roberts of the Lone Star Under the Rising Sun podcast. Take it, take it away, Shay. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, as Simon said, my name is Shay. Um, I am the host of the Lone Star Under the Rising Sun podcast on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, oh God. all that stuff. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit yeah. behind. I'm a bit behind. I'm just on YouTube. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no worries. No worries. You just got to you gotta spread it out, spread the message out there. But anyway, yeah, uh, Happy New Year, everyone. So this will be episode number 18. I'm interviewing Simon. He's interviewing me. So it's a joint podcast. So... Hopefully there won't be any technical difficulties as we had before the the show yeah, we, started. Right? So, well, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just a sign that I need a new uh, new headset. This one's quite old, so we didn't pull that on your new, new year, new new headset, right? So uh, I just like to say hello to the, to Daniel, to um, uh, Mrs. Carrie D. Oh, oh, I know yeah. you are, um, uh, Karina. Um, who else? Remy, Natalie. Frederick oh, really? and uh, Radri. All right. Well, hello, everybody. So, anyways, Simon, thanks for having me on. Well, and likewise, likewise, yeah. yes, it's been it's been been a while since. I mean, the last time I think you were on on one of my shows, I was wearing a top hat and sunglasses. <laughs> I, I think so. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've I've sporadically appeared on your um, your old show, uh, mm. the three old dudes, um, and. I think I actually had a, a guest spot early on on that show. Yes, that's ago. right. Mm. Yeah. Good times. So, good times. Bro. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, thank you for having me on and, and thank you for coming on to, on to my show as well. So um, would you like to go ahead and, and start? We'll, we'll start with you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, um, Radri knows. And perhaps people in the audience know, so, so long-time viewers that know who you are and, and, and where you're from. But um, who are you and where are you from? <laughs> okay, why why well, are you in Japan? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, if you haven't caught on by now, my name is Shay. Um, I am originally from America in the state of Texas, hence the name Lone Star under the rising sun. I've uh, been in Japan for about 10, actually 10 years now. Uh, this year was my 10-year anniversary. And wow. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for those on my show who are unfamiliar with you, please introduce yourself. Um, well, welcome. Uh, uh, well, welcome. Hello, I should say, to, to the listeners of Shay's podcast. I am, my name is, is Simon, uh, formerly Simon Three Old Dudes of Three Old Dudes Show, and, uh, and currently Simon No Chanama, um, which is a name that was given to me. Uh, by one of my friends in, in Tokyo uh, as the name for the show. I have been um, living in Belgium for 20 years. I'm English. I moved here in 1996. Uh, oh, 22 years, my God. Um, and uh, I've been on YouTube since about 2013, uh, initially just making kind of vlogs and videos and not getting very far with that. And then um, all of a sudden I discovered live streaming. Um, uh, thanks to a, a, um, a now a friend, uh, but then a YouTuber uh, called Comical Rainer, who I was just talking to this morning. She was asking me parental advice, uh, <laughs> having to deal with her son, who's who's is eight or nine years older now, and is getting. Yeah, he's quite he's quite a lot older. Yeah, um, if you know, yeah, Rainer, she's uh, uh, been following her for a long time too, so. It's it's nice to to see um, how she's doing and, um, and her family growing up like that. So yeah, she um, she she's not doing so much YouTube anymore um, because her, her her work has taken her away from that. She now um, actually uses she does online uh, uh, English teaching to Japanese people, and it's uh, the business has taken off. So uh, she hasn't right. got really time to do YouTube, but I, I still keep in touch with her. Yeah, yeah well, good for her. Wish her 
all all the success for that. So, um, so Simon, uh, I have a question. Actually, I didn't, I I never knew this uh, this answer. So I'd, I'd like to ask you, what actually originally got you interested in in Japan in the first place? Um, because you don't live in Japan. I don't live in Japan. Uh, yeah. This lady here. Yeah, I see. Uh, uh, and this lady here. Yes. Um, and I don't have a picture of them, but a, a particular Japanese band. Um, and it wasn't until uh, the age of 45, <laughs> actually, that I came across this band. And prior to that, I had no specific interest in Japan whatsoever. Um, but I happened to come across this band. And, and as like most, most people who, who are not familiar with Japan, who only know sort of like the, the mainstream things about it, it's this... It's, 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 exotic country uh, in the east that uh, 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 strange things happen there strange and cool things happen there one of the strange and cool things that uh, I, I found about was um, young women, young women uh, playing uh, hardcore rock and roll punk <laughs> so, um, quite a lot of that here actually yeah, so this, yeah no, it's, it, you know it's, it doesn't quite have happen much anywhere else and it was like wow this is cool uh, I want to find out more about these, and um, of course, when you go on YouTube and do that sort of thing, uh, YouTube sort of throws up recommendations for you. Uh, Japan this, Japan that, and um, uh, it, it all sort of snowballed from there. Um, the microphone has seen better days, <laughs> says not abroad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I apologize for any. Um interference on my part so yes, you, you, you have to keep perfectly still Shay. <laughs> yes I, I will be a statue i will not move in, it's in, a podcast in. so you know so it doesn't well, that's that's the entire <laughs> medium of which people will be taking in this information and it sounds like like shit on this episode so i'm, I'm sorry i'm, I, I'm yeah. sorry <laughs> no 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 it, oh sorry i'm Bradbury's asking me if I'm, am i punk do i look punk no uh, I mean, it was like a rock a bit rockabilly punk, and I no, I wasn't rockabilly punk, but I mean, and you know, Japanese young Japanese, what well, they were at the time in the in the when they started, um, they're now about my age and still going, um, but um, yes, they were the they didn't look particularly punk. It was like rock and roll. It's more rock and roll than than punk, but you know, rockabilly punk. Right. Well, that that's cool. That that's a very interesting um, way to 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 gain an interest in, in Japan. You know, a lot of people have, you know, different, different uh, introductions to, to J Japanese culture and whatever, you know, mm. either through um, some sort of media, you know, animation or, or movies, or um, in your case, it was music though. So that's... Yeah, I mean, uh, um, that was, the, like, that, that was the, the trigger, if you like, that got me, you know, in, you know I thought, wow, I mean, Japan must be sort of, sort of Slightly more interesting than I thought it was. If it produces right. this kind of kind of thing, and then I, with the YouTube recommendations that were coming up, I came across Kurt Bell, of course, uh, because I was I was curious about you know Japanese countryside, um, and yeah. and that led me on. Obviously, Kurt was then involved with Mully and uh, all, all that crowd, and so all those recommendations came up, and that that led eventually to Rainer, um, and Rainer was starting to doing these live hangouts. Which, which I then uh, really enjoyed because, I mean, we're not doing it too much now, but there was a lot of interaction with the audience and it, it was nice sort of talking to the person on the screen. Um, I mean, she, she's Japanese, but she lives in Canada, so uh, there wasn't a direct Japanese, uh, Japan connection there. But as I say, the, the recommendations were coming up and uh, I started subscribing to these other channels and becoming more and more interested. But that led right. from one thing to another, really. Um, yeah, um, you, you, kind of, you kind of went down a, a a Japan rabbit hole on YouTube. It's easy easy to do on YouTube. Just go down <laughs> these different rabbit holes, you know. So yeah. Um, um, and so what? I mean, I throw the question right back at you. Probably your podcasters have heard heard all this before. You could you could maybe sum it up in in a in a sentence. <laughs> then yeah. what what made you interested in Japan and want to go there? Well, uh, yeah, I, I have talked about it before, but in Basically, to boil it down, is I had an interest in it since I was just a a, a kid. You know, um, I wasn't. I think the very first 
introduction to anything Japanese was um, a comic slash um, animation in America. It's actually still quite popular, but when I was uh, when I was a young kid, it was really popular with the boys. Is uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? So, all oh, right, nin- the, yeah, nin- the, nin- the original nin- comic, the original comic version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and there was like a late '80s, early '90s um, animation that came on, and I was hmm. I was right at the age where I saw oh, cool weapons and you know fighting. Um, I got hooked on it. So, oh, so you, you and, came and, to Japan to to to, to see if the turtles really existed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 that that was the initial. But it, it grew really. It just grew into like the um, the medieval Japanese culture. You know, I, like I mm. saw the samurai and the ninja, and I thought, well, that's that's cool. That's something I don't really know much about living in in. Oh, your microphone's gone again. Tap your tap, tap your head. <laughs> Wiggle your wire. Do something. <laughs> switch switch to toilet mic. <laughs> okay let's, let's try that then <laughs> okay we're, we're now on toilet microphone it just makes him sound like he's in the toilet but, but there we go <laughs> all right sorry everybody we'll have to i'll have to be broadcasting from a toilet tonight <laughs> yeah well anyway but you you can at least hear me clearly without all the interference is that correct it, it, that's correct yes there's no more crackling or, or, or loss of you know loss of yeah I, I i would rather sound like a, i'm in an echoey toilet than, <laughs> than than make the make the ears of my audience and your audience bleed so you know. <laughs> okay. anyways um where, where did i leave off oh so basically i it was just so different than uh what i was accustomed to as a kid that it was just a fascinating culture and it just seemed very far and distant so um that's where the interest grew and i never really got into like japanese animation or 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 comics or anything like that Mm. um i played a lot of video games as a kid so i i was exposed to more of the culture through that but uh Mm. i think yeah i think even when i was a kid i just said yeah someday i'd like to go there you know and it just sort of manifested itself over the years and it wasn't it was never like an obsession though it was just sort of in the back of my mind. And when I graduated from university, I just thought, well, now's the perfect opportunity to, to try it out. Mm. So I did. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, I got divorced. That was, <laughs> that was my <laughs> perfect opportunity. <laughs> however, however way we can, uh, <laughs> can, we can uh, come to the same goals. You know? yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but, so you're, you're a long-term expat in a different country than where you're from. Um, yeah. What what interested you in, in Belgium, and why have you chosen to stay there for 20 years? Well, um, I mean, I shall probably offend all Belgians now, but I had no interest in Belgium, Belgium uh, prior to the age of about uh, 28. Um, and then I met a Belgian woman uh, and... Um, started a relationship and that was what basically led me uh, to move to Belgium after she came to stay with me for a couple of years and uh, that worked out fine except for the sort of the social life because we lived in a remote country area and there wasn't any um, so <laughs> she, she got a bit uh, you know frustrated and, and ended up going back to Belgium and I, I followed um, basically um, I had no other than in being with her, I had no deep interest in in the country. Uh, I mean, since then I've you know, I've explored it and, and learned a lot about it. I shall I shall I shall use the, the wonder of my uh, my apps and I shall go to this background. There we there we have my my, my, my the, the various countries of which I am fond or from or or, or have explored. Um, in the the hills in the background there. That's just up behind my parents' house in England. Wow. Uh, this bridge with all those like gothic buildings and whatnot that's Ghent which is about half an hour down the road by car from me and here we have Japan this is in Yamaguchi Um, it's the Mori Gardens in in, in Yamaguchi so uh, now you've how many times have you traveled to Japan yourself 
Uh, now four times, uh, four? Con yeah, consecutively, sort of each year uh, I, I've been. Um, okay. And, and you most recently came last year, correct? Yes, November last year uh, was my November, fourth visit. Yeah. yeah. And how long were were you in Japan? Uh, three weeks this time. That was the longest I've been. All the previous visits have been two weeks, but uh, right. this time uh, I wanted to make it a bit longer. Uh, it takes a lot yeah. of sa saving up of, of overtime to do that, but you know it's worth it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Japan's not a country you can just, you know, see everything in one go. You need, you know, as, as you said, you know, at least four times, weeks at a time, and you still haven't really yes. even touched the surface, you know. So. Yes, I mean, I, mean I, 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 you're in Tochigi, and I mean, that's how many hours away from, a couple of hours away from Tokyo? Yeah, yeah, about for a train ride, mm. um, probably about an hour and a half car mm. About the same. Uh, if you take the Shinkansen, the bullet train, it's about forty-five minutes or so. All oh, right. Oh, that's not so bad. Oh, well, yeah. that's I can or so. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. because I, I, I'm just basically stuck to the, the the classic golden route because most of the people I know and 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 you know, in contact with live live along that that route. You know, the furthest I got was Yamaguchi, and that's beyond Hiroshima. Uh, yeah. Right yeah. before Kyushu. So um, uh, visiting. Oh, I can't go. Yeah, visiting this lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you got to figure out where to put it. So, to those who are just listening, um, Simon has uh, some very lovely pictures of the three countries he is closest to, right? In, so, in, uh, in, yeah, in mind and body, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in my mind and body. So, have you been to any other countries uh, other than just like a layover, like uh, for any length of, of time? Uh, uh, tr Tobago. Uh, I went for like a couple of weeks long ago with my parents and sister and, and girlfriend. Um, yeah. That was quite interesting. I've been to Italy for about two, two weeks. Um, France, obviously. I mean, that's that's just like get in the car in a couple of hours and it's away. But I mean, I went to France when I was at art college in England and we did a trip to Paris. So that and that was my first trip to France. Right. Um, right. Germany, I uh, uh, went to Cafe and Jedi's wedding in Germany, that was nice, and I've um, been to Switzerland uh, for about a day. <laughs> anyway, Frederick, I've been to Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, did you did you at least say hi to Frederick? That was... Well, yeah, this was long before I knew Frederick, so... Yeah. I see, I see. So you were there in spirit, right? So, Hello, Englandese, um... Englandese, my friend from, from Yamaguchi, uh, he's, he's in the house. Hello. Oh, yeah. yeah, I went to Yamaguchi about nine years ago or so. Um, to Hiroshima, Yamaguchi. Uh, I went to Iwakuni only, though. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Very nice um, bridges. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. The Samurai Family Bridge. Yeah. Kintai Bridge and all that. I've not, I've not seen that. My, my girlfriend was, well, no, I call her my girlfriend. She's my friend, actually. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, it, it's come back to that. Uh, but she was going to take me there but never happened i think it got right. damaged actually didn't it? it got damaged in the 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 hurricane or whatever it was the uh, oh, typhoon. I, I'm not sure. I, I haven't been there in almost 10 years but um um i would imagine you know a strong typhoon might might damage it right hmm. so um a couple of things we want to ask um I, i've talked to a lot of um expats on the show not necessarily japan but i i wanted to get your thoughts on when you first moved to a different country belgium mm -hmm. yeah um and what was your the the biggest struggles that you had moving to a new country and then uh two your very first time you came to japan mm -hmm. what that experience was like uh well moving moving to belgium that was luckily i mean i was uh I mean, not single. I was in a relationship, but um, <laughs> and the other half was going to Belgium. So I had, I had no nobody I was having to leave. My, uh, we had no, we were not married. Had no children, obviously, at that point. And um, there was my family, uh, but I, I was living in the far north of of uh, the area where where I'm from in England, and, and it was like a, an hour and a half drive. To visit my parents, uh, for example, so I didn't really see them very often either. So, in terms of connections, uh, it, I wasn't cutting a lot of ties or anything. So, in that sense, going going to a new country, 
um, wasn't wasn't so difficult. You know, I didn't have a lot of stuff um, <laughs> to take with me. I think we we borrowed her her parents her, 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 have a business that uh, uh, I was employed or I am still employed at, and they had a, a van and we just it was just not a particularly big van, but it was enough to fill with all the stuff that that I possessed <laughs> that I wanted to take. So that was quite easy, sort of driving down the motorway with that. Um, right. So in, in 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 general terms, it was it wasn't a. Bit, I mean, Belgium itself is not. I mean, there are lots of differences. In the language and the and the and uh, the history and so on are different to 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 England, but it's basically north northwest Europe, uh, mm. and they've got supermarkets and you can get pretty much English style food and and whatnot. So uh, wasn't, it wasn't too much of a culture shock. No, least. not really. I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, it was quite easy to sort of fit in. <laughs> well, that, that's good. And you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't still be there after 20 years if you didn't enjoy living no, there. I mean, uh, you know, I obviously got married here. So I, right. I was kind of like, you know, <laughs> Can't say it. Right, sorry, sorry, dear. I, I'm going to live in England and <laughs> now and again. So I stay here. <laughs> Very quickly after getting married, we had children, so that's another reason to stay. And uh, and the reason, main reason, I have I have continued to stay. Really, um, you know, I, I love my sons, and uh, so I don't really right. want to sort of leave them behind, kind of thing, uh, until they you know, until they've flown the nest of their own accord. So yes, that's why I'm still here. Now, as for the other question about Japan, that's uh, my first experience going to Japan. That was quite quite something, really. Um, you know, the you can't really see it, the lady in the photograph, sort of who's holding up a glass of wine. That's an actress, and um, I, 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 various circumstances led me to to be, contact this Japanese actress. Uh, and she said in one of her private messages to me, "If you ever come to Japan, I'll buy you dinner." So like, okay, right. Yeah. Mot motivation number one, and then <laughs> Can't say no to that, right? <laughs> and motivation number two was was the the other lady uh, yeah. who had been introduced to by by an American friend on Facebook, and she said, you know, this is my pen friend, you know. So and she said, please come, please come and see me. So I thought, okay, right, you know, I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll see what, how much it costs, and I, and I had some savings, and um, and luckily for me. Just at that time, the the All Nippon Airways had just uh, reinstated direct flights, and as a as a means of, of do, from from Belgium to to Japan, and they they had a special offer. Uh, so I, I I sort of yeah I grabbed that, and um, and it was a very wonderful uh, event. Um, they had like uh, taiko drummers and and all kinds of things events going on. They had the director of Brussels Airways and the director of all, uh, all Nippon Airways and um, Miss Nippon and all all these kind of things going on, lots of things to eat and drink while you were waiting for your plane. So uh, it was quite spectacular, really. <laughs> it's like, oh, I must be destined to go to Japan or something. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, then I got there and um, I actually met up with. Uh, she's not really active on on YouTube much anymore. Um, legit outlaw jess you may have heard of her uh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. some of the people in the audience will know who she is um she's an american woman um uh, uh who's living near um fujisawa um and she said oh yeah you can come and stay with you know stay with me if you need somewhere to sort of crash so that was the per the first place i went to in in japan uh it was near the, the atsugi air base <laughs> in in fujisawa um staying in a rather nice detached house uh, in a spare room um and the, my first experience in japan you know other than landing at the airport and uh, getting the the train into tokyo and then getting the train to, to fujisawa was getting off the train at, at to fujisawa and stepping out of the station and, and there was my friend just pulling up at the traffic lights <laughs> that was great that was a coincidence got in yeah, yeah we good went timing. In. Yeah, uh, so what do you want to eat? And I said, I don't know. And that's <laughs> something Japanese. <laughs> so she, she right. took, took me to a kaiten sushi, and uh, and that was the start of a, a wonderful two weeks. Nice, nice. Well, it sounds like you had a just very nice, you know, easing into um, so you know into the country. 
Yeah. So what was it? I mean, you know, to throw it back, right back at you, you you like discovered that the, the Ninja Turtles didn't really exist. That uh, <laughs> that like med medieval Japan uh, was buried under concrete. And um, <laughs> so, what was your first experience of? Um, uh, well, yeah, I had uh, I'd originally come just to uh, to stay. I planned to just stay about a year. You know, I just wanted. Oh to, right, um, you, 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 so not not just like I'm going to. You didn't visit in in, in advance. You just no, thought, no. Oh, it, you know, first, yeah, it was actually a lot of firsts for me. It was my first time, uh, other than Mexico, to visit a foreign country, and it was my first time to live in a in a foreign country, hmm. and. Um, it was also it was many firsts. So I, I I came in almost blind, and I did that on purpose because I I wanted the challenge. You know, everyone I talked to at home thought I was a little bit crazy. They're like, "Okay, you have you studied the language at all?" I go, uh, "Just a few words." <laughs> and they said, uh, "Do you know anyone over there?" I was like, "Personally, no. I don't know anybody." And they said, well, how, what are you going to do? And I said, I'll figure it out when I get there. Wow. And I actually, I had no apprehension, no fear. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just knew that it was something that I wanted and needed to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, when I very first, the very first time I, I got off, I wouldn't say the airplane because airport's an airport, you know, mm -hmm. even Narita is kind of just like any other airport, you know, mm -hmm. but once I got off the train, out of the train station to uh, the uh, guest house I was standing in for training for my job. Mm -hmm. That's when it hit me, getting into the taxi and just seeing the city that I was in. I was like, mm. you know, I, I, I think I was uh, 23 at the time. And I just thought, wow, this is so different than what I'm used to, a small town in Texas to, to this, you know? Oh, wow. So, yeah, and um, everything was just new. I was, you know, taking pictures of mundane the, the things now that seem very mundane to me at the mm. time were just so new that, you know, I was taking pictures of it, you know, um, yeah, there was no Instagram filters then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This was, I mean, God, I, I was still, it was a digital camera. It wasn't a disposable. I did have a disposable camera, a Kodak I bought from, from a Walmart, but mm. uh, I, I did have a digital camera as, as backup. So, um, and my very first Japanese cell phone was this is even before uh, smartphones. It was a flip, flip phone. Oh yeah, have you still got yeah, that? Yeah. Have you still got it? Yeah, well, yeah. They, they call them in in Japan. They call them garake. Mm. It's like Galapagos Keitai, which is like Galapagos um, uh, mobile phone, but um, just means really really old style mobile phone. But yeah, that thing was was tough. I remember um, it. I was riding my bicycle down the street once and it flew out of my pocket and it just shattered all over the street. Mm. And I thought, Oh fuck, my, my phone's gone, you know? Mm. And I picked up all the bits and pieces, put them together and it turned on and it was fully functional. That wow. That's, <laughs> it, it had a lot of, a lot of scratches and scars and the paint was flaked up, but yeah. it worked. So. Oh, cool. I mean, because one of the things in Japan is, one of the cultural things is people have the, the uchi and the soto, and they'll have the smartphone for the soto, and they'll keep the, the flip phone for the uchi. <laughs> Actually, I, I, never, um, I never heard of that, That's, but it makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, I know um, it, a lot of it's generational, too. A lot of older people still use the, uh, the, the flip phones, mm. and... You know, some some use smartphones, but yeah, it's it's mostly uh, it's, yeah. So I see yeah. see quite a lot of them, you know, wandering around with it, you know, and and then then I'll, then I'll see them get the smartphone out. So they're they're doing they're doing their sort of like the online contacts there, right. and then like sort of like offline contacts <laughs> are on. Yeah, I mean, you know. I to be honest, I I kind of sometimes would like to go back to the flip phone because you know it's there's less distractions. You know, you you don't have any cool apps that you can distract yourself <laughs> with. You know, it it's actually kind of keeps you more in the present moment. But I use my phone for business so much that I'm I it's tethered to me no matter what. So um, it's it's kind of I have to use my smartphone in order for to run to run the businesses and stuff. You know. I'm just saying hello to, to some future guests who have just arrived in 
Uh, or one one yeah. of two future guests who has arrived. <laughs> great, great. So yeah, that's another thing. I wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about your old show mm -hmm. and how it transitioned to what you're doing now. So mm -hmm. you said you you started doing like vlogs and stuff on YouTube, and that didn't. Well, really... I say vlogs. I mean, uh, I'm not a, not really a vlogger. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, although it doesn't seem this way, I'm 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 I'm, I'm got my mug in front of a camera and I'm blabbing away. I don't really like to do that on the street with, with uh, holding a camera. Um, yes, so, but I did, <laughs> yeah, I, I did make. I mean, uh, comical Rainer, uh, as I mentioned before, there was like a little community that grew up of of, of, of followers, and they all in, encouraged each other to sort of go out and make YouTube videos. So I decided to do the same, and you know, I'd been watching what people did on on the jvlog thing where they go out and say hey guys everybody says hey guys on, yeah. <laughs> on youtube and <laughs> and uh, so i tried doing that and i uh, i uh, got about two two or three sentences out saying hey guys i'm here and then and then shut up and and, and filmed just where i was going <laughs> and then edited it together and put music in and and uh, and got about 20 views each time <laughs> so yeah. that's what that, i that's like that's something though if you're if you're just starting out you know 20 views is is quite nice you know um <laughs> Hey yeah. guys, yeah. <laughs> this is Remy. See, yeah, that's that's something. When I very first started doing YouTube, I, I didn't do vlogs. I, I actually I did like language learning um, reviews. I would do reviews for different books, mm. and I think I made my first YouTube video. Well, official YouTube video. It's it's gone now, but um, I guess eight years ago now, more mm. more than eight years ago. And I was reviewing a Japanese language book and I put it up and I just forgot about it. And mm. about a year and a half later, I just go back to YouTube and I mm. checked out my channel and it had it had like a few hundred views. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's that's kind of cool. I didn't even put any effort into it. I didn't put any tags or anything. Mm. And th I mean, the YouTube algorithm was very different then. But I just thought, well, why not? just keep going why mm -hmm. not make another one right mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of how and then that's how kind of got into the the whole um japan youtube thing was mm. um was that and then uh, I, I started checking out others and when i actually sat down and tried to do vlogs i always felt really awkward about it you know yeah. like like yeah. you're like hey guys and then <laughs> you gotta you start talking and and I would just try and go off the cuff. I, I would, I, some of them I would plan, but I, mm. I didn't really write anything out. And mm. man, some of those old videos of mine, I, I was like stuttering. Well, they, them. They, you know? uh, going, going to your channel, going to your channel. I, I, I remember you know, back in the days of, of three old dudes. We'll get back to that. Yeah. But um, um, that those that when you had Shay in Japan was the name of your channel at, at, at right. that time, and and you had a, a massive yeah, right going, going off here and there and exploring places. They've all yeah. seemed to have disappeared. I can't find them. Anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So there's a reason for that. Um, I I felt after a while, like I even had some videos that quite that got a lot of hits, mm. but it was it was nothing. I wouldn't say none of my videos were authentic. A lot of them were, but I, I found myself making videos just to try and get hits and clicks and, and whatnot. Uh, and I, it didn't, it uh, didn't feel authentic to me. And I didn't want that. I, I wanted something unique. I didn't want to be like any other um, blogger or whatever. Um, yeah, no, nothing wrong with those people, but there's only so many liquid tasty thing I found at the convenience store I can eat now you know like there's only so many of those videos you can watch before it just gets you're just spinning wheels you know and people see that all the time so I had a I had to really look in and reflect and like okay what do, what do I what do I really want to do mm -hmm. and why why am I doing it so mm -hmm. I kind of um, I looked at some of the videos that of mine that didn't necessarily get the most hits, but the ones that resonated deeply with me, the ones that mm. I was really being true to myself on. And um, those were just helping people because people would ask me questions about how I 
either learned Japanese or, or came to Japan or whatever. And I mm -hmm. thought, okay, that's what I really liked doing was, was just helping people out. Mm. And so I, I decided to just wipe it all and start fresh. Oh, wow. And you, you, re you really sort of got rid of them completely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I not only did I delete them from my channel, I deleted the raw file. I mean, like I, I went cold turkey and I, part of me kind of regrets it just because I, I'd like to go back and not even re-upload them, but just kind of look mm. and, and how far I've come on YouTube or, or just making videos. Cause God, I was awful. Uh, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm not good now. Yeah. And I look back, you know, four or five, six years ago, but I was even worse then. So, um, but it, it, in that, in doing this, it's it's actually helped me a lot with uh, with speaking and, and whatnot. So it's, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's a total waste, but yeah, that's um, I just I wanted to be more authentic, and I've always found that I feel more comfortable just behind a microphone mm. than a camera. I don't mind being in front of a camera, but it, it's just more comfortable for me using mm. the voice instead of awkwardly looking at where, where's the camera yeah. now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, 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 I mean, you have, I mean, I've, you, you've kept a couple of, of videos of ones with Kevin, uh, yeah. and you still, you still go out and film with Kevin. Uh, for those in the audience who don't know, Kevin Crocker, um, a Canadian chap, also living not far from from Shea, uh, yeah. makes videos and makes a living also doing um, voice acting, uh, or or at least tries to make a living voice acting. Uh, has a very sort of very typical and, and Radri has, has mentioned that that you Shay have a, 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 a the ideal podcast voice so I mean ha, has it crossed your mind uh, to 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 maybe go into kind of voice acting that kind of thing I've, I've actually done a voice acting gig uh, last year um, it was my first paid voice acting gig is for a, um, a Japanese car car parts company uh, it was it aired on local television here for a few weeks ah. I, I missed it. I, I, I actually did see the uh, the commercial, but I didn't see it air on TV. But mm. um, for like 10 minutes of my time, it, it paid, you know, pretty good money. So I thought maybe there's something to this. And mm. um, just and did a, just I, did a better microphone. <laughs> well, I, actually, the last time I used that, that microphone, everything was fine. It's just yeah. in the past two weeks that it's it's gone to crap so okay. yeah it's a, it's a sign that i need to buy a, a new microphone actually i have i have a blue yeti i just never really used it um well they're good i've got a blue snowball yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm it, it's usually pretty good but uh, i might until i get a better headset i might uh, revert back to using that but for now you'll just listen to me talking <laughs> to the toilet so okay. um but uh I went off on a, on yeah. a tangent there, but, but basically, <laughs> yeah, I've, I, I have gotten paid um, for my voice, which is which, which is quite interesting. So, uh, oh, yeah. just uh, just reading the comments, uh, like uh, Daniel says, he's got blue balls. <laughs> <laughs> blue, my blue balls, right? So, I, I'm actually I can't see any of the comments, so. Um, oh, you well, well, yes, I forgot to tell you. You need to you need to call up a tab with with uh, the show on it. Mute, okay. mute, mute the show mute. and, pop, uh, and pop, pop out the chat, and then you can interact with the audience. And that, that, um, would, that would be nice and engaging, wouldn't it? It would, and uh, they can ask questions, which or, oh, wow. talk, or talk amongst themselves. And I was saying before, I'm oh, sorry, Maya, terribly sorry, Maya was saying before that. She made a, a an AMV of an anime, uh, and five years later, it had six thousand views and copyrighted music. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I mean, that that's just it. Uh, I don't know how uh, how YouTube really works now, like the algorithms. I it's it's completely different than when I started, but mm. I actually was able to figure out the old algorithm. Um, just by I would just put in lots of hashtags. Mm -hmm. I would I would put in misspelled hashtags because people type fast or whatever. So mm -hmm. um and I know at least one or two of my videos had over over a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand views. And I I didn't know how how did you yeah, do it? Yeah, that, I, shall, it I like, shall have to try that. I shall have to start doing misspelled hashtags. It could yeah, be quite, well, quite quite risky, I imagine. You know, in the days I'm of not, three old dudes, I'd have been quite happy. But I mean, now I'm not so sure. 
<laughs> so, right, right. I've not found such success since then, but it was, I think, only two of my videos. Um, I'd say one of them was a tutorial about using a, a, a language learning program, mm -hmm. completely un unrelated to Japan. It was just about language learning. And the other one was... How to Talk by Shea Willits. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but uh, one of them was... Do you remember a guy, um, he used to make YouTube videos. Uh, his name is Ryan Boundless. Do you remember that? Oh, well, I was subscribed to him. Uh, yeah. That's one of the first people I've subscribed to. And, and you know, I, I, I had some communication with him. It, was, it seemed like yeah. a nice chap at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, on a personal level, I have nothing against Ryan. Um, actually, I followed his videos for a while, but he made this video that said English teaching in Japan sucks or something. And, and I understood exactly where he's coming from because everyone who's taught English in Japan knows what he's talking about. But I try, I made a response saying it doesn't suck. Mm. And I gave my reasons why. And that one actually kind of blew up because I think um, in the title of the, of the video, it was mm. pretty much very similar to his, but I put a big bold characters, not, you know, in there. Yeah. So uh, when, when, people would search for that or even like in the recommended videos from his mm. you would see mine as a response and it was kind of like the old school style of YouTube where people would make video responses mm. you know and that was actually one of my more successful ones it wasn't necessarily a good video I had to go through and edit out a lot of ums and ahs and rambles and stuff but it still got a lot of hits and I actually saved the audio from that and I, I think I put it up as one of my um, a podcast, podcast. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just, just because, not just because it's still my true thoughts on on the matter. You know, even though it's been a few years. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. He's 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 no longer in Japan, I believe. And I mean, oh. at, at one point he he was he was in 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 a quite successful relationship with his, his then Japanese girlfriend. But I don't think that's 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 the case anymore. Oh, really? Okay. Anyway, that's, yeah. I haven't really kept up with with yeah. his. Um, YouTube stuff. I, I don't think he even does it anymore. I think he's got no. like completely um, pay like a paywall, you know. So, which is fine. More power mm. to him if he if he's getting money and living, making a living off of it. Then, mm. oh, good on yes. Which know. is, I mean, it's, it's something that I don't particularly aspire to on on YouTube. I do this. This is my Saturday. This is my hobby. Saturday afternoon, <laughs> and, right. and my and my social life really. I mean, I, all everybody in the audience, most of them I've met, and. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what I was asking a little bit earlier was, um, so you, you started doing YouTube and then you found the live streams. And so how did you actually end up meeting the other two old dudes, uh, Dean and Robert? And that was, that was, um, uh, panic really. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> um, I, I was invited onto uh, a Christmas live stream by Rainer, uh, along yeah. with about 10 other people. Um, it was just random. And, uh, I thought this is fun. I enjoyed it, and there were, as I say, ten other people on. I mean, not all at once. It was it was also moderated, and we were only on. Each person was on for a, like a minute or so. But you know, watching the other people on, I thought oh, I'd quite like to do this, but I didn't have the cojones to do it on my own. And, and I thought, who can I do it with? And the majority of the other people on it were were like like. 20 years younger than me so I thought no well that's not going to work um I need to look for some some people who are kind of my age and you know of my life experience sort of thing um and uh, Robert and Dean fit fitted the bill they were they, yeah. they, they, they were on and uh so I, I contacted them uh and uh, through my amazing powers of persuasion <laughs> I got them to, to to do it and we did our first hangout I think in March 2013 or something like that, and yeah. um, uh, lasted about two hours. <laughs> we just waffled on for two hours. Yeah. Um, but you guys made it like a weekly thing, and you had yeah. guests on, and that that was something I'd ne actually never seen. I I'd seen like live streams on YouTube at mm -hmm. that point, but I never seen like just a set chat show. Yeah. I knew um, who was it? Uh, Give me a break, man. And Hinko Simon had had their thing going but that's about it mm -hmm. you know and uh so when and you guys were all living outside of japan so i yes. thought it was a cool, cool perspective of just 
fans who enjoyed Japan and enjoyed you, J Japanese YouTube mm. to to have this sort of chat show. And I thought that was a cool dynamic. You know? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of like gained its own momentum and, and went went off at completely different tangents <laughs> and uh, in, in, into, 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 into areas you know, that, uh, that perhaps, you know, I, I no longer wish to. <laughs> well, that, that's part of, you know, growing as, as the channel. But mm. what, I, I never really knew what caused the end of it and what motivated you to, to do what you're doing now. Mm. Well, basically, basically um, it had run its more or less run its course uh, in, right. in, and what I'm doing now was was kind of like the the idea I'd had for the three old dudes in the beginning but with three people but it kind of as I say went off on its own tangent which was good and we had fun uh, and, and 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 so on but I think Dean particularly you know uh, was getting tired of doing it uh, mm. and Robert uh, as he will attest um, you know was moving on uh, into other other fields um and so we just kind of mutually decided that yeah okay um let's wrap it up um but i still wanted to go on i still wanted to do what i'm doing now um and and basically used it as a spring plank uh, that's, that's that's dutch as a, as a springboard <laughs> a springboard uh yeah for i mean uh, for starting this show so basically the, the the one week the three old dudes finished after five years and the next week this show started um Okay, so it's it pretty much sort of a, just a transition from three old dudes to what you're doing now. Yeah, one old dude, but, but I, I mean, I couldn't keep calling myself Simon Three Old Dudes, which is my my name on Facebook and all all the social media and and and, and whatnot. Uh, which right. is where where uh, I don't know if he's probably watching afterwards. I sent him the link, but but, but where um, Mashu and Rena, um, who are one of our final guests on on uh, on Three Old Dudes, Rena said, "Why don't you call it?" on your show uh um simon's living room but use the 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 old showa period uh, name for living room chanama uh mm -hmm. so simon no chanama simon's living room because it's a yeah. it looks a cozy atmosphere which is you know uh why i haven't got my green screen at the moment is because my green screen is technically not not fantastic uh, but uh, quite a lot of my shows have this have this showa period living room japanese living room in the background on, on the green screen uh, just to give that yeah, cozy yeah. feel but right now you have a really nice uh, fall fall colors video loop going for those this who is are yes this is um i mean in in honor of the the the, the podcast guest uh this is uh near nico in tochigi yeah i shall go i'll go to another one this is like a promotional video <laughs> Oh, hmm. of, 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 it's, it's a it's a golden triangle. I was going to say at a Kegon, but uh, yeah, there you you did visit Nico, though, right? No, I haven't. I mean, like I say, oh, I, 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 you you have two three weeks, and but I've got like friends I want to visit, and uh, I had like one day, kind of really one day where where I went to somewhere different to where I'd been before on this last trip, uh, and all the other times I, I kind of went to places that have, uh, I've been before. Right. Um, uh, next time, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Nico's to, to me still to this day, even ten years later, for me, uh, Nico is still one of my favorite places on the planet. You know that I've been to. It's it's just so gorgeous there, um, and I feel lucky that it's only, you know, less than thirty kilometers from my house. No, I can you just go there anytime I want. You know, you lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I was just hiking today. I, I didn't even find the entrance to the mountain I wanted to climb. I wanted to watch the sunset oh dear. Over, the, uh, over this mountain. Then I, I was losing time, uh, and I couldn't find the entrance to the, to the trail. So just took a few photos, and then I said, okay, I'll come back tomorrow and figure mm -hmm. it out. So um, it's actually part of one of my goals for this year is, uh, it, for example, um, I, I really got into hiking once I came to Japan, maybe seven, eight years ago. Mm. And I caught the, the hiking bug, right? So I, I filmed, I did a few YouTube videos of some, uh, some of the mountains I climbed, but there's a hundred famous mountains in Japan that hikers climb. They're called the Hyakumeizan, which is hundred famous mountains. 
and I've climbed about five of those. But even within Tochigi, where I live, there's a hundred, even a hundred and fifty notable mountains. There, wow. There's just mountains everywhere where I live. Yeah. So mm. one of my goals this year is to climb as many of those as I can. I know I can't climb all 150 of them, but I've already climbed a few of them. Mm -hmm. So that's already taken care of. Uh, I, I do want to climb them again, uh, but just um, I, I can climb most of them any time of the year. I mean, because mm -hmm. they're, they're not high enough to where they'll have snow, but a few of them are too too cold and too icy to climb right now. So I have to wait. But the one I was going to today is only about 350 meters high. So it's not, not a that's, big one. Yes, it's so, not really a mountain, not really a mountain really as it's, such. It's like a big hill. It's yeah. a big hill. Well, <laughs> but to get to the top, it's actually quite steep. Like mm -hmm. I was looking um, at some of the reviews and it's uh, it's not an easy one to climb. It's just, a, it's short. So um, that's that'll be my agenda for tomorrow is to actually find where to climb up. If not, I'll just, uh, give myself a little bit extra daylight and just go through the uh, the mm. wooded area that I almost went into at, at dusk tonight. So, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I have been to one mountain or, or big hill in in mm. Japan, uh, and I'm glad glad of that. I was in Kyoto, and um, uh, kind of like time to kill kind of stuff. I, had, I hadn't planned anything, and, and uh, a YouTube friend couldn't make it who I was, I was supposed to meet up with. So I contacted um, that lady there, that one, yeah. Uh, okay. and, yeah, and she she's familiar. She's Japanese, but she lives in Hong Kong, and but she's familiar with all you know the area. And she said, "Oh, go to Mount Karama in uh, in Kyoto. Uh, there's a temple at the top." Um, so I did, and it was it was very good. It was you know. Um, it, it was. I'm really glad that it was one of the things I did outside of the normal routine. Um, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, here in Belgium, you, the, the the highest point is about six hundred meters, and you have to drive about two hours and into the sort of French speaking part near the Ardennes, uh, and, and and you've got this sort of hill. <laughs> and in the Ardennes, in, in in the south of Belgium, it's kind kind of sort of um, valleys and and and. and yeah. uh, isn't isn't Belgium sort of like a just flatlands, lowlands? In know? the north, where I am, it's kind of yeah, it's basically all flat up to the sea. Uh, and then it starts to start get a little bit hilly, sort of further south. Uh, it doesn't really get seriously hilly. It gets, if you go beyond Belgium into Luxembourg, which is just sort of the next country down, uh, slightly hillier there, and that's quite nice. Okay. I've been there. Uh, actually, yeah, I met um, on my recent trip to Thailand. I met uh, someone from from Belgium, and uh, oh, that's right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so shout out to. To Leslie, so, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but I, I think she's back there now. Mm. Yes, yeah. she said she was from. Yeah, she wasn't from Brussels, but uh, I remember you no, saying. No, no. I, <clears> I, you I, went to I, Thailand, so I mean, you know, you, you know, you, you uh, I mean, I, I, I go to England obviously for for my holidays to see my parents and so on for Christmas and summer, and uh, I've been to Germany for a wedding, and and but I don't really, and I go to Japan, of course. Um, right. But I mean, uh, uh, do you often take holidays out of, of Japan? And, and, and what did you, I mean, you went to Thailand. Is that something where you you thought, yeah, I really need to go there, or? Uh, uh, I, I try and yeah, I try and take holidays outside of Japan as much as I can now because Japan is now the normal mm. for me. So I, of course, there there are places in Japan I haven't been to that I still like to explore, but. To travel to at least, especially Southeast Asia, but other Asian countries, while in Japan, is so cheap. So I, I might as well take advantage of that. Mm. And um, what I I've developed a, a sort of traveling style over the past few years, where I don't plan anything. Like I, I even made the decision to go to choose Thailand itself mm. a few days before I booked the ticket. Oh, and right. I, yeah, and I, I try and go in as blind as I, I as I can because I guess I'm trying to recapture that magic that I felt when I first came here oh, and yeah, yeah. But I realized the older I get and the more I travel while it is new but mm. I, I, I've done this before so it's not as pristine and new as 
it was mm. the very first time, if, if that makes any sense. So yeah, like I mean, the, yeah, once once you've made that step, if you've never travelled before, and you know, but you know, obviously it's a new experience. But you know, once you've done the rounds of of airports and and, and train stations and <laughs> hotels, right. it's and, and, you know, it's the the new bit. The new part is just you know, what's beyond those a, a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. So when I stepped out of the airport in Chiang Mai, which is in North Thailand, mm -hmm. everything looked very different, but it was still sort of familiarity, like, okay, I've, I've done this before, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it really made me realize just um, how it was to be so new to a country. You know, I didn't speak any Thai. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know any Thai. I, I know a few words now, but mm -hmm. I didn't know any Thai. I didn't, the, the culture is completely different than in Japanese culture and American culture. So that was both refreshing and um, I wouldn't say intimidating, but it was just different to navigate through, you know, because mm -hmm. you have to learn the social faux pas and yes. yeah. things. But without the language, you kind of just have to read, you have to be able to read people. Mm. So that's a bit um, tricky. <laughs> it, it, it's a bit tricky, but at the same time, it's to me, that's that's fun. And I don't plan my trips. I, I have a basic idea of what I want to do, but I figure it out when I get when I get there. And I find mm. that really rewarding mm. for traveling. Is um, I like solo travel, and I don't like to plan because every everything's like an adventure at that point, mm. you know. So, so I mean, I mean, I, I, I solo travel because I have no other option. <laughs> 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 um, right. uh, but uh, but generally, I, I, I and I plan. <clears throat> I mean, I don't plan visits to particular places uh, uh, much, uh, but I do plan visits to particular people, and that's all carefully right. sort of you know pre-organized. Uh, so my, my all my visits to Japan uh, have been largely going from one person to another, uh, and sort of in between in the times I got left in, in between, I'll go and you know wander on my own uh, to particular places. Uh, for example, in, in the second time I went to Kyoto, uh, um, I had one. I think one day, that was the day I went to this mountain where <clears throat> where I didn't have anybody body to meet up with. Um, but the second day, the, the other day was was uh, Tomoko Desk came and, and 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 we went out together. That was that was fun. So it was all kind of like you know um, structured in that way, um, I mean, which is which is good for me. I like I like. I like that. I don't think I could do what you do and, and just yeah. <clears throat> sort of book tickets and think, right, I'm going, <laughs> and not know the language. And yeah, I, I love it though, man. Yeah. And to me, that's that's awesome. I, I love just not knowing when, where I'm going to stay that night. You know, so I like just figuring that stuff out. It's not for everybody. You're mm. right. But mm. for me, I mean, I, 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 have you been uh, anywhere um, in a group or, or, or with a friend or, or, or like that? Or yeah. You? Mm. I went to South Korea for a week with um, my girlfriend at the time. This was, mm. you know, four or five years ago, and that was that was an interesting experience um, because even though we we went together, we didn't really plan on anything. We just went to to Seoul mm. and figured out what we wanted to do there. So it was very similar mm -hmm. to what I do. It was just with. With one other person but because neither of us had a set plan it was easy to make something up on the fly mm -hmm. um i i have traveled with friends across america took like a 10-day road trip mm -hmm. about 13 years ago um one of one of the friends i went with she was really extremely opposite of me in terms of travel planning like she has to try she has to plan everything down to the minute almost you know oh, wow. and i just know from that while the trip was fun if we didn't hit any one of these certain deadlines that she had planned out then it, it caused a lot of unnecessary fighting and drama and i'm like how is that any fun you're supposed mm. to just enjoy being with your friends and yeah and, and take it as it comes kind of thing you know uh, yeah yeah control so freak kind of thing. What, what got to my mind was i'd rather experience something new and figure something out to where no matter what I do, it's new and it's not disappointing than to plan something. And if something goes wrong, then be disappointed that I didn't fulfill that plan. Mm. If that makes any sense. Mm. 
Mm. I mean, I mean, I just noticed a, a, a comment here from from Maya. Oh my God, I can't deal with people who plan too much either. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that, that being said, I mean, uh, you know, I, although although quite often my certainly my first trip to Japan and 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 uh, each each of my trips, to, the, the second trip was was pretty well cut and dried. I'm going to do it. The third trip was kind of like my friend in Yamaguchi said she couldn't see me, uh, and this friend up here said she could uh yeah. so that was my motivation for, for okay let's go and then i thought what am i going to do while i'm there <laughs> and I've got, I've got to go and see Molly. i've got to go and see you know uh, uh tomoko and victor and you know and I plan, I planned it like that you know and, and and sort of you know mapped it out that kind of way um you know i can't, I can't just go and and, and then because I, I have day i've had days there where i've not planned anything and i i think what am I going to do? <laughs> We're going to yeah. go. You know, I end up, I end up wandering, wandering around the park. <laughs> yeah, there, there is that factor there too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's a gamble, you know. I mean, you could have like my first day in Thailand. I walked around Chiang Mai because I I'd heard Chiang Mai was quite a nice city, and it is. It's a it's a lovely city, but all you can really do there is just go sightseeing at the uh, at the temples and and whatnot, which is. Mm -hmm. They're great. They're lovely, but after that, you know, and, and eat, you know, Thai food at the night markets and stuff. So there's plenty of stuff to do there. But for me, I got all I could really out of Chiang Mai in one day, mm -hmm. and I had planned. I had in the back of my mind planned. Okay, I'll, I'll go from Chiang Mai to Pai, which is uh, about. Um, mm, pie. Right. Sorry, I'm doing my Homer yeah. Simpson. Mm, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> which. which also, if uh, if you know anything about Japanese pie, is also a uh, a slang term for 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 breasts as well. So okay, all, yeah, mm. all the uh, all the all the um, like buttons and souvenirs, like I love pie and everything. Just yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. So, but uh, it, but pie actually is quite a different vibe to it. It's really small. There's only two thousand people that live mm. in this really small town, but. It's, it's a, a lot of backpackers. Yeah, a lot of backpackers go through there. And when I went on this trip, I only brought a backpack mm -hmm. and what I could fit in that backpack. I didn't bring any suitcase or anything. I just what I could put on my back in a small backpack at, at that, not one of the huge, huge ones. You know, just a, just a small backpack, a few change of clothes, and went there. And it's just a completely different vibe to it. And so I loved it so much that even though I'd planned to stay for two days and then go back to Chiang Mai, I just said. No, nah, I'll just stay in Pai until mm. my last day, and then go to Chiang Mai for a night, and then catch the plane the next day. Mm. So, um, I, I changed my plans on the fly, and mm. a lot of the the pictures that I took of like the canyon and all that, those are just plans I just made up at the spot, you know. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, why, why not go here, you know? Yeah. So, uh, 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 a, a new a new a new badge for Pai is from from, from Daniel is three point one four one five. I, I, I kind of had that feeling in 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 that one place, that one day where I, where I had a like a free day, and I decided to sort of go outside of the, the main routes, and I went to this place called Onomichi, yeah. um, near in Hiroshima Prefecture, and you know, I'd, I'd just seen vague pictures of it on Booking.com, and I thought, well, it looks all right, and it was, it was really nice. I I, I, I was tempted to actually, you know, I, I, booking in advance, I had all my places booked, so I, I couldn't really. Oops. I couldn't really, uh, you know, so sort of say, oh, but great, you know, I'm not going. Um, but uh, I would have quite liked to have stayed a, a, a day longer in in Onomichi. Um, but uh, you know, uh, they have 25 temples on this hill wow. next to all the wow. little houses. Uh, but I, I, I got bored after three. <laughs> but that, the, the little streets on the houses were nice. Uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, that, that's nice. Yeah, what I say is. Once you've seen one temple or shrine in Japan, at least you've seen them all. There's a few that stand out. There's a few that stand out, but for the most part, they're all very similar. So, um, you know, I still I'll still check them out, but I don't spend a lot of time at the shrines and temples anymore, just because I've seen so many now. You know, um, but, Re 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 Remy's being clever with with his keyboard. I can't do. I can't put, I can't put the pie symbol there. You, know, you need yeah. you need you need to, you need to now now do a, a boobs emoji next to it because that's what it says. <laughs> Too much, yeah. 
<laughs> so we're, we're getting i mean i mean um for me i mean in my show i don't know how long your podcast goes on but my, my, mine's getting sort of towards the end um yeah. is there anything else you'd like to ask um uh, well just um I, you plan on coming back of course right <laughs> mm -hmm. uh that's yeah. that's the i mean yeah i mean the previous years uh, you know that was always the the, the idea, and uh, I I kind of like saved up overtime. So, uh, but I've used up a lot a lot of overtime now, and I've got to start from scratch. So it, it all depends on on uh, on how much overtime I can make this year, right? Uh, because I, I'm allowed to keep it and use it as holiday time, um, yeah. and financially it would be probably sort of just doable because I've been using savings. So far, I mean, I, I don't make enough money with my job to to build up a reserve enough, enough of a reserve to do it regularly, right? To, you know, right. to fly regularly. Um, so th all those factors play in, uh, and then um, you know, visiting the, the various uh, people that I want to visit, I have to sort of organise that and see when's the best time. I mean, that's been the, 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 the determining factor in in previous visits is. Sort of when these ladies have been able right, to, right. you know, yeah. Um, hey, which seasons have you visited Japan in? The nice, fall, the, right? the nice ones, um, yeah. uh, like uh, uh, late, late fall and early spring. Uh, yeah, I've those are good times. Yeah. Um, this uh, summer is really beautiful, but it, it it's it gets so hot here now. So even even for me, um, it reminds me of home when the summers here are really similar. Humid and hot, so. Mm. Well, yeah, it, get, it actually gets like that in Belgium as well. I mean, not not perhaps at, at the level of humidity, but uh, you know, in in this living room here in, in in the summer in Belgium, you know, you're getting like 38 degrees sat in the living room. Wow. It's yeah. like that's that's horrendous. Yeah, 40, yeah. 40 anything close to 40 degrees is, is quite mm. miserable, right? So, um, yeah, and I, I guess usually what I ended off with is um, any sort of thing you'd like to say to the audience my audience or your audience as well um, well i'd like to say i'd like to say to my audience see you next week yeah. <laughs> just, i mean the, 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 the yeah, regular viewers I, 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 I spam i spam them relentlessly with with the links to watch uh, and i think some of them do come of their own accord <laughs> which is i'm very grateful for uh, yeah. i'd like to say to shay's audience uh, you're very welcome to come and join me next week as well next week yeah. I'm, I'm i'm trying to get a guest for next week he said i'd love to be on your show it's light japan for those in the audience who, who know him uh he, he messages me saying i'd love to be on the show i message back saying great 12th, 12th of january this time and i don't hear from him again <laughs> so it's like um i'm trying to get him on the show so hopefully next week it'll be light japan uh, on the show uh, okay. and uh otherwise it's it's me and I may go go for a wander like I, I want to do if if I can't get a guest. Uh, and the week after that, it is I think uh, Anna and Maya who are, may still be in the the, the audience. Uh, they recently started the channel. They're friends of of Kaz. You know Kaz, the photographer Kaz. Kaz yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're friends of his. Um, so that they may be coming on the show the week after. Um, okay. So I, I'm I'm gradually sort of getting new guests. So, yeah. um, and uh, thank you for having me on the podcast. Um, okay. what, are you doing another one next week? Um, I'm planning. Actually, uh, I, I asked uh, Remy if he if he wanted to be on in a few about a month or two ago, and um, he he said yes. But uh, we might be working something out very soon. So still waiting on his final answer for next week. But oh. if not. Then I mean that that's fine. I, I'm uh, I have few guests in the pipeline, so mm. yeah, yeah. Good. But uh, anyways, yeah. Thank you, Simon. Um, I'll um, I'll put all the uh, links to whatever social media and of course the YouTube uh, channel. Mm. Uh, that's the well, most once, important. Once once this is uploaded, I'll I'll, I'll put on in in those in in the uh, in the comments uh, in the description and and also in the. Uh, and the end cards and all that business. So for you, for you, um, uh, you sent. Uh, Remino sent you a reply during the show. So you'll have to look back through the comments. Yes, I, I will. Uh, I, I will check 
because I haven't actually been checking the comments up until recently. Um, but if if you send it on Twitter, Remy, I'll I'll check it very soon. So, but um, anyway, thank you, Simon, very much. Um, glad glad to have you on. You're welcome back anytime, and mm -hmm. I'm very thank you very much for inviting me into your uh, your tea room, your living room. Mm -hmm. This is this is my real living room. Yeah, the, no yeah, that's the real one, not, not the green screen one. Right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Shay. And uh, I will see you all hopefully next week. Bye. Right. Thank you. Goodbye.